Do you think most racing games are boring? You're not alone. Traditional racing games like Forza and Gran Turismo focus on maintaining the best, most optimal driving lines. The problem? These games provide you with a set racetrack and lock you into it. You want to take a shortcut? Too bad! Stick to the track, bucko! There's one exception in the series, Mario Kart Wii. This game is incredibly broken. In many tracks, you can just drive around the finish line and instantly get a lap. It's not about driving the optimal lines anymore. It's about finding the best shortcuts and exploiting them. And wouldn't you know it, it's commonly voted as the top rated entry in the series by the community. And people to this day still play it, despite the fact that Nintendo shut down the servers. This inspired me to create a new racing game. Instead of focusing on taking the optimal lines, what if the game was all about taking shortcuts? Imagine you're racing and you have a tight turn ahead. Instead of slowing down, you can just jump over it. If you take the turn, you might pick up some power-ups which will enable even more shortcuts down the line. So you have to decide, is it better to take the shortcut or collect the power-ups for future advantages? Now it's time to dive into development. First on the agenda, the car. I went on Thingiverse and looked for a free car model and found this Porsche. I downloaded it, but when I dropped into Unity, something occurred to me. If I use a famous high-performance vehicle, people are going to assume that this game is similar to Forza and those other games I'm trying to distinguish myself from. Not to mention, uh, my graphics are not going to hold up to theirs, so I kept looking. And there it was, the perfect car. The red Little Tykes toy car that somehow everybody seems to know what it is. Because it cost money, I decided to just model it myself. I dropped it into Unity, and now it's time to start programming. Unity already has a solution for making car physics, and it's called wheel colliders. But when I tried it, it was a complete disaster. So, I ditched the wheel colliders and opted to lump the whole car together as one object and give it a single sphere collider. And, uh... Whoops. I can just lock the rotation on the X and Z axes. And now, perfect. Now we have a functional driving setup. There is still one issue though, which is that the car is looking a little stiff. Unity's wheel colliders also can serve as the suspension system for the car, but since I got rid of those, that means I also have to figure that out. To fix this, I had to create my own suspension system from scratch. Sounds easy, right? Wrong! Here's how it works. I track the car's position at every frame and use it to calculate the acceleration and thus the force exerted. I take the force and I apply the reverse of it to the body of the car. Then the spring takes over and does their usual bouncy goodness. And this makes sure your ride feels smooth, responsive, and real no matter what stunts you pull off. Next, I added engine sounds. I found a video called Ferrari 488 Pista with Novatec Rosso exhaust screaming on the dyno 800 horsepower featuring flames. Now, I'm no car enthusiast, so I have no idea what any of that means, but I think it's something like... I cut the best parts in Audacity and reconstructed a powerful engine sound for the plastic toy car. Now we gotta make the driving a little juicier. And what better way to do that than with drifting? If you press the B button, the car releases its traction with the ground and skids sideways. Now onto the power-ups and ramps. The ramps give you more height the faster you go over them, increasing the possibility of strategic jumps. Initially, I had a Rocket League style boost system, which speeds you up gradually as you hold the button, but combined with the drifting it was a little too complicated, so I simplified it to just a single button. The jumps give you a single upward burst of speed as well, which is, I guess, that's just what a jump is. Racing alone on this test track got boring pretty quickly, so I created the most important feature of every racing game, the Ghost Replay. Now that the mechanics are done, it's time to create the tracks. I remember having seen some YouTuber talk about using the curve modifier in Blender to make the tracks. I think his name was like Denny or something. But yeah, I used his method. For decoration, I wrote a script which sprinkles the trees randomly around the grass. You may have noticed that this track is in a closed loop, and that's on purpose. Lap checking in video games always has some sort of checkpoint system, and I figured that would inadvertently make a lot of shortcuts impossible. So instead, the goal is simply to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. No checkpoints. When I was done, I had three tracks. Pine Park, which is tight and full of shortcuts. Fall Forest, which is more spaced out, which makes shortcuts a little bit more rare. And Dry, Dehydrated, Desiccated Desert Duneway, which features a lot of height changes and ramps for exciting jumps. After finishing all the tracks, I whipped up a quick main menu. The About section features a, a certain model which longtime fans might recognize. Now we're ready to test. I had my brother play first. I told him that my best time was 26 seconds and challenged him to beat it in 20 attempts. If he succeeded, I'd buy him a Popeye's chicken sandwich. If not, he'd buy mine. Let's see if he pulled it off. If I just turned, I was thinking about if 
I should just turn left? Well, I won that one. Easy sandwich for me. Next, I sent the game to my buddy Jake, the infamous game destroyer. In the escape room game that I made, he had theorized that there was some clip that was possible that he never actually did. Well, he actually did it, so go check that out on his channel. But anyway, I was going to send him the game, but before that, I wanted to give him a little prank. I changed all the track names to these obscene, horrible names. <laughs> and I think I messed up his brain because when he's looking at the track map, all he could see was dicks everywhere. Once that was done, we got into the playtest. Right away, the game broke. Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Remember that custom suspension system I was talking about? Well, I only tested it at 60 FPS, and his monitor runs at 240. Instead of requesting that I fix the bug, he just continued to drive around the map until he jumped off the side and immediately drove as far out of bounds as he could. We drove so far that he fell off the floor into the infinite oh abyss of the skybox. Once he got that glitch out of his system, he set his monitor to 60 FPS so that the game ran normally, and he began experimenting with driving around the track differently and taking shortcuts. Oh, 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 turn, oh around, yeah. turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around, turn around! The biggest frustration he experienced was that I hadn't added a minimap yet, and so he couldn't really plan out his jumps. After that, I added the minimap and fixed all the bugs, and the playtesting phase was complete. Now onto the music. For the ghost replay mode, I started with a basic house pattern. And then I threw down eight different snare drums randomly. Then I added a little bit of swing. And then with the bit crusher, it finally gave it this video game vibe. And once I added the bass line some chords, the result was pretty good. For the main menu, I experimented with FL Studio and found this synth called Citrus which comes preloaded with a lot of presets. I tried out a few and found this one called Acid 4, which was a little too intense for a game about a little tyke's car, but I used it anyway. The last track was a lot. I wanted to go with a big jazz piece. Of course I had to use crummy sound fonts to make the whole thing, but I wanted to get rid of them, so I tried to play the saxophone part, but let's just say that it was a little above my pay grade. I was able to get it to work using editing magic. Here's the final track in context. As all over the place as it is, I think it works pretty well. For some reason, I couldn't figure out a good title for this game. At first I thought Toddler Time Trials was a good title because of the car, but that might make people think that this is a baby game, and it probably increases the chances that Little Tyke sues me. Since there's no important characters to speak of, I had to resort to just calling the game what it is. Shortcut, racing. Yeah, real clever, I know. With everything in place, I created the final export and uploaded the game to itch. I also created a Discord for the community where you can share your best ghosts. Have fun and get some records. I'll see you in the next one.